I just went right into our conversation. Oh, I started too fast. No, no, no. We, we, I came too fast. Actually, that's that's, That's a problem. It happens to me all the time with women, but here's the thing. Uh, (laughs) We, uh, Well, see, you know, we were talking about you. Uh, you edit your show post all this, yeah. And this is live happening, so the live happenings, you know, everybody's gonna see that me being an idiot twice now. You know, it's so I, great. I can't just like let that shit go. So yeah, I was like, we can start over. Well, we we are officially starting now. Welcome to the ATX Comedy <laughs> Review. I am Chad. This is your co-host M- Maggie Mayfield today. Hi. Welcome everybody. So much happening in uh, comedy this week, huh? Nah, nah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But you are doing, you're filming a special. Am I, am I wrong about that? No, you're not wrong about that. Okay, when's that happening? That's <laughs> April 19th and 20th. I'm oh, filming. wow, on 420, huh? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's- I am, it's at the East Austin Comedy Club, and I'm very excited. Um, I I get the very distinct pleasure of working with a director, his name's Michael Malone, out of Los Angeles, a mentor of mine for years now. Um, but he is brilliant been doing stand-up for like 20 years and now is kind of taking a step back behind the camera and is directing specials with some of the a and b list comedians so you're like doing I, the real thing uh, yeah you're not, you're not just playing around but a yeah. camera up in the corner yeah uh what's uh, the plan for it what do you um do you see it uh, a couple things. I'm going to take it the film festival oh. route first. Okay. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll do a uh, limited time digital release on YouTube. So okay. it'll be like two bucks, five bucks, whatever right I decide. And then after that, I'll self release on Amazon. So. Oh right, that's yeah. cool. I like that. I, yeah. So we uh, we used to have our movies on Amazon. That's pretty good because they, uh, they 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 put your royalties right like right up. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, the uh, limited release uh, thing you were talking about, uh, what would you say before? Sorry. On YouTube. So yeah. it's like like you can do like a, like you can like pay, you know, oh, okay. you know what I mean? So to recoup some of the cost of this because yeah, yeah. it is not cheap to do this. Right, to have a professional this. director, director yeah. have it all done <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Sound, audio editing, real. It's so much. Yeah. Yeah, and what's brilliant is that he's actually going to help me cut this up into 60 second TikToks so that I can help push and promo nice. and it'll look good and sound good. And so do you, uh, are you trying to focus your comedy on 60 second TikToks for this mm, special? I can't because okay. I do songs. Yeah, so so it's like, I was wondering, are you just doing one minute bits? No, no. Well, that's where we met was kill Tony the first time, by the way. That's right. I never seen you back there since then. But you don't go very often, but it just happened to be that one time. Yeah. I've only uh, been on it twice. I've been, Many times, but I'm yeah. busy. I don't want to like sit around and like like me every week. Yeah, uh, well, not like <laughs> this will be number twenty seven. I think in a row. Yeah, that is some dedication. Yeah, I know, but uh, I think if I would have got on it first, I wouldn't have came back. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Because I, I, my plan was to not uh, do stand up until after the show. I wanted my first time to actually be on that show. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Yeah, was it your first time on that show? No, I never got on. I haven't. You I haven't still been, haven't been on that I show. Not been on. Okay. So yeah, so I just did. I started doing stand up. Oh, I was gonna say. Yeah. I was like, I there's no way. Yeah. yeah. So I thought I wanted to that to be like, how can do anything? Type yeah. Thing. But so you know, you know how I am. Yeah. So, but now that I uh, have been doing it for a little bit now, I I feel like okay, what's my time? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Tony. Yeah. Now, Gotta get now, now it's my time. Now now I have it down. Yeah. But I'm still doing the same. So I've, I've written so many you know minutes since then, but I've, I'm still doing the same minute. for. I wrote a Kill Tony minute. Okay. So that one is specifically for I want to hear it so bad. I'm, I'm sure you've heard it because <laughs> I've, I've had to practice it before. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm sure when I first started doing it. Uh, the mics you've heard. So you're not nervous about the minute? Are you nervous about any of it? I, I the interview? I don't, I don't get nervous about this stuff at all, really. Cause, so He asked the same questions. Yeah. Are you I, single? What do you do for fun? Well, yeah. <laughs> Tell me something interesting about it. Yeah, exactly. But I uh, I think I've, you know, having the background of being a, a writer and being a pilot and uh, doing these things that similar to what he, he's been doing himself, mm-hmm. I think we have a lot we could talk about. But what's kind of fucked up is I thought we were going to talk about that stuff like right away and hang out and, you know, be whatever. But now I find myself like hanging out like in the same places that he's at a lot of times. Uh-huh. And uh, like, he, he tell like he's like he wants to know like more about me like because we're like we're, he's like hey yeah hey you or whatever yeah but we he's keeping it away from the show you know he knows like I'm there every fucking week yeah so he's he's pur- pur- purposing like not knowing about me but like he's like oh, go by here we are here we are here here's that motherfucker again here he is again but yeah I'd, I'd still I wouldn't give him that much credit 
I, no, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't think yeah, I don't think he's like wanting to know about me. I'm just saying that uh, I think uh, he, he purposely holds off on. He wants to hold it for the show. Are so, you projecting? I th- Do I th- you want to hold off for the show? I think uh, I think he's trying to make a good show. He doesn't want him to know about me until then. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'm we'll just, just leave it. At I'm that. projecting it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I don't know. I, it, it's just weird because, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I am there a lot. Yeah. And everybody knows who the fuck I am, but I have not been on the show. You so, will. Yeah, It'll well, happen. Yeah. I don't It'll know. It's happen. weird. I don't know. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Listen, if you grow some tits and change yeah, your name to like. I thought about just doing it as a trans. Like, you know, you a would get picked comic. in a second. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But second. I don't know. if I guess if you're doing it for swimming, you can do it for comedy. But you don't. <laughs> But you don't want to like set your brand up that way because that's not who you are. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. So the first couple of times I dressed up like, you know, nice shirts. I wore a suit. <laughs> I've done everything. Now I'm just wearing t-shirts and jeans. You know? Just be yourself. Yeah. 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 So that's how, yeah. I have, if I would have been picked at, at those other times, I might've been somebody different, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of weird. You know, I, I, it's, it, I'm seeing, I'm seeing me develop as I'm not being picked also. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. So it's, are you from Texas? Are you from Austin? Mm-mm. Where are you from? I'm going to talk like I am. No, no, no. I just, I'm just curious as to like where. So I was uh, born in Chicago Heights, like lived okay. in Gary, Indiana, like on that border Gary, area. Indiana, Gary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, There's a lot of songs about that. Yeah, that's a musical song. <laughs> so like. Oh, well, here's the next one because I lived in Oklahoma for a while. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but uh, where the winds come uh, sweeping down the plane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where me and the wife met. We uh, we worked at uh, Walmart together, and I uh, got married yeah. when I was like 18. Uh, you yeah. were a baby. Yeah, so we've been married 23 years God now. God bless you yeah. both for making that work. So it's wow, been a that's amazing. Long time. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, it, making it work and, you know, just being broke is two different things. You know? <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, we've, we've moved around a lot. You know, I've uh, li- went to like screen, learned to screenwrite like in Arizona. I've had mortgage companies uh, like throughout uh, the, 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 uh, Oklahoma and Arizona. And then, um, yeah, ended up uh, being a writer out in LA for a while, and yeah, then I came back and uh, ended up in uh, teaching people about cannabis in Arizona and uh, making yeah, yeah. You've been in entertainment for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So I used to do. So that's that's why I don't think I'm nervous because people used to pay me three hundred bucks to hear me talk. Like yeah, uh, like. Like I would have classfuls of people that would pay each one of these people pay three hundred bucks to hear me talk to them for six hours. I six had to be entertaining. I, I had to be entertaining for six Whoa. hours. So yeah, that was. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't want to like split it up. Cause I just want one day and get them done. <laughs> I, I could have split up like a week or two days or whatever, but no. Nah. I love to hear that you lived in different places though, because I find that people that have are more rounded, like more well-rounded, uh-huh. grounded, and. Just so much more tolerant. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I find myself Ill- 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 more Ill- Ill- intolerant of people. I well, don't like that, people. I think there's a difference. Between, like, when you grow older, there is some of that, like, no no time for bullshit. Yeah, right? sure. But I think uh, people who have lived in different places, like I have and you have also, were drawn to people like that because you... Uh, can listen to different perspectives, right? Yeah, because yeah. Chicago is very different than Oklahoma, which yeah. is very different than LA and even Arizona, which is very different from Austin yeah, yeah. and how people think and behave and move about in the world. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. And also when you were out, you're welcome in one of those places. You start looking <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Once people start looking for you, you gotta, you gotta duck. You yeah. Know? You gotta yeah. disappear. It is interesting though, uh, <clears throat> that you started stand up here. Yeah, and that it didn't happen for you in L.A. or even Chicago, which is a big. Well, I was I was too young. As I was you know I was a kid you know for the most part uh, up until so I had a I had an agent when I was fifteen in Oklahoma mm-hmm. as a magician. Stop. Yeah, so I I was a magician uh, as a kid. I like you want to hear a secret. Uh, I hate magic. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's, that's that's why I that's why you just now learned about this. Oh, God, know. I hate it so much. So, I get it. I get it. Uh, but you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put the side note in there. So, uh, Candace uh, with the banana phone, Candace uh, Medina. Yeah. Uh huh. Her birthday, uh, they hired a magician for her birthday. Oh, and you hated it. No, you were I, like he was terrible. He was. He was. He did his thing. He it's just okay. did his stuff. But after that, I came up and I. I kind of, I kind of outdid him a little bit. I made something float. 
I lit on fire. It was a big thing. I got a big gasp and awe. Yeah. So it was really cool to like just pull that out. To like, be better. Yeah. And just, just have it there. Just have it in the back pocket for night. Yeah. Nobody knew it was coming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So that was kind of cool. You know. That is, it is really cool. Yeah. This is, I'll tell you why I don't like it. Uh huh. Because I want to know how it works yeah. so bad. You meet people like me all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But see, that's why I don't do like the typical little things. Pick a card. Any card. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do those. I do those like, oh, wow moments, you know. Do you want to know where it started? This is a terrible dream. And I remember it from when I was like, a toddler. <laughs> but I had, it was like a black and white dream. And we were on a picnic blanket. And I had this recurring. We were on a picnic blanket with my family. And there was a clown. And the clown, also in black and white, suddenly took a wad of toilet paper, threw it in his mouth, and then started pulling out these beautiful like silk scarves. So many of them. I need a volunteer. Anyone want to uh, Me. I want to do that. I want to pull silk scarves out of my mouth. And then it was just nothing but toilet paper and I couldn't do it and everyone laughed at me. And that was the end of that. And I never liked magic I should have really my entire happen? life. I don't think that really happened, but I remember like it was a dream yeah, I think that you, I had often. I think you often. repressed this. That, that, might, <laughs> that might have really happened. This might be a real thing. I think a clown uh, punched you in the park and uh, you've, you suppressed it as a dream. A three-year-old? I punched a three-year-old in the No, not punched. I said punked. You know, like, like you know. Oh, like, punked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Got, 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 you know, because the clown's going to look better. Yeah. And that's not, that's not even a magician. That's a clown. That's that's not even fair. Oh, that's all right. That's that's, that's fair. That's, but listen, that's it's not, it's not. It's little Maggie brain. I can't help it. I think I think that really happened. What what other kind of dreams do you have? <laughs> what uh, what, what other things are you suppressing? They're bananas. I don't want to go. <laughs> Everyone's dreams are weird. It doesn't. Yeah, you know, I only dream about other lives. Other I lives? I don't dream about my shit or my own stuff. Like people have that school recurring dream. No, I don't know. School. Yeah, you know, like if they like, wake up in school with in their underwear or all that shit. You know, I don't do that stuff. I don't either. No, I dream like about like being like a mobster in like the twenties and like running from like the cops, and, like having a shootout. <laughs> yes. um, That's fun. Having like a yacht, like uh, like just like I live different lives. Do you know that that's very rare to dream like that? Huh. I don't know. That is, you are in like the small three percent of the population that can dream that you're in some that you're someone else. Huh. Yeah. Most people don't do that. I think my life just sucks enough that I don't want to be here anymore. I have to go be someone else for that's a while. So funny. My sister does that. She huh. dreams like that. Huh. It's very, very rare. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I just found that out just now. See, that's why you know this, this happens. Podcast, <laughs> right? It's called having a conversation. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's so like 3% of the people only dream about other people. Huh? Yeah. Do you feel special now? I do now. See, I found something new out. That's there you cool. go. There you go. Maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow when I get pulled up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not even going to look it up. You're not even going to like base it on. I was, fact. That's a fact. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, if it's set on a podcast, it's, it's a true, it's true now. It's, a, it's on the internet. Yeah. It's forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's a real thing. So do you find that you are acclimating really well to the scene? Oh in yeah. Austin comedy. Well, so I, at first everybody really liked me and now I think everybody really hates me. What? Yeah. I just, I know. Uh, what are you talking about? I, I get this, I get this, I get this notion of fuck off. And then now I think, I think what it'll come back around. Because uh, what did you do? I, I I don't know. I think I'm, at first I was too confident for being a new a new comic. Uh uh uh-uh. uh, that's not a thing. It, so uh, Amy Shanker said it's a thing. Because uh, when I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here with uh, Zach Labozo, uh huh, Amy Shanker, the door guy, um, Clay, a couple other people. At Creek is that uh-huh, where? You're? Okay. Uh-huh. I just came off uh, stage. I was like my first or second time coming off the stage, <clears throat> and um, I'm sitting there. I'm talking. I had a good set. I knew that because I'm doing the Kill Tony stuff and a couple other things. Yeah. I know, I know it's going to work. I'm I'm, comp- I'm excited about it. I can't wait to get on stage. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got me all no- nervous about this conversation. Bring up that memory. Me? Oh, no, sorry. no, no. This I, whole. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, see, I don't get nervous about things, but now I do. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we're all sitting out there. I just got off stage. I watched her do her thing. I watched a couple other comments do her thing. You know, and we're all t- talking in the back, smoking weed and hanging out. <clears throat> Man, this is nervous. So... She uh, goes, uh, I'm sitting there talking, I'm talking about, I don't know, whatever else, but I, I, anything I do, I'm pretty confident about what I do. Mm-hmm. I can't, I'm not going to be unconfident about what I do. Why yeah. would I? So uh, she goes, oh, are you a comic? I go, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm a comic. She goes, well, how long have you been doing it? I go, well, I just, this is my first or second time. You know? She yeah. goes, oh, you're not a comic. I go, oh, okay. Well, I just saw what you did. Did you see my act? And uh, she goes, no. I go, well, I saw yours. And I think that really upset her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I just started talking to I, 
I just so she she threw a little bit back at me, but I threw it back at her a couple more times, and I just kept on one up and a little bit more, mm-hmm. and then ever since she's never talked to me or hate whatever. Yeah. I, I tried to make it up to her. I tried buying her a drink or whatever. Tried being nice, but nah. <laughs> ever since then, nah, I'm done. So yeah. stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. Well, that's why I'm just so yeah. it, it's just those type of moments. So I think that level of confidence match with now my level of comedy I'm putting out there that I'm just I, I'm starting I'm starting to make more enemies than friends in the in the uh, comedy industry well you don't want that but also listen delusional confidence that's those are the people that go far those are the people that make it to the top that's why i was in la for so long yeah (laughs) Yeah, you think it's gonna happen right you don't go there not thinking it's gonna happen right (laughs) right yeah 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 so i'm delusional i feel like yeah it's the insane ones that make it there you go it's the cuckoo bananas like so you're yeah. not saying I'm not crazy. It's just that I'm crazy enough to make it. If, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that is, so, no, I'm just kidding. Listen. Fuck them. Fuck them yeah. all. That's what I'm Can saying. I say that? That's, why, I say that? that's why I don't have friends because I say things like that. But yeah. Just keep working hard. You're going to be Making... you're gonna have my level of friends here real soon if you keep that up, Maggie. You don't want to. <laughs> listen, I've that. got plenty of haters. Yeah. Plenty of them. And that's uh, it's what? That's fun. You know, it's it's fun to have the because you know what? That they means you're doing know, it right. They wouldn't know who I was if I wasn't doing something. Right. If, if I sucked, I don't think it would matter. It, whatever. Yeah. And whatever it is about you that makes them upset it has nothing to do with you. Oh yeah. And everything to do with them. Sure. That's why. That's why I keep on telling them. <laughs> say less. Yeah, no, Literally, yeah. say less. That's Put your head down and just do the work. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing about uh, like your mic that like we talked about with like even we bring your mic, your mic up a lot, the challenge mic, because writing on stage, writing in that moment is such important, you know, to as a comic, especially somebody coming up like me. Thank you. Who is uh, who, who's learning uh, jokes? I've and I've actually written jokes that I use in my act now from that mic. Because of that, you know, like, uh, like it makes me so happy. Yeah, you know, it's polished up, but like, uh, there was one part of a, a joke that I said that, um, like, it was about uh, birthdays. I said I had a terrible father, and my dad left when I was young, and that uh, he only came back for socks. And uh, you laughed at that. I, I did, yeah. I, and it didn't register me that that part is even funny, yeah. just because. Uh, <laughs> I you know, remember that, yeah. yeah. But ever since then, I've I, I've made sure to put that in there, and it's always getting a laugh. Yeah, I, it's, it's one of those things that I just don't understand because you know I live this part. Yeah. But it's a funny thing for just everybody to yeah to hear, you know. Yeah. There's more. Yeah, Ask yeah. more questions about it. Yeah. You know? So it, it's really cool to to develop those those types of jokes, and then uh, Alden, uh, who's going to be on next week. Uh, he does a tag writing mic. Yes, and, I want to uh, do that so bad. So what I do, I actually listen to the um, uh, the prompt. He does he does a write three jokes uh-huh. about whatever. Yeah, and nobody does this. Some people might write one joke or whatever, but he'll do like glasses, uh, kiwis. Um, he'll just pick a subject. Sim- sports it's, fans. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever. <clears throat> so writing those three jokes uh, has really taught me. Uh, so I'll write like a, a, a short, a medium, and a long one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I usually use them now. Like I, I've, I've found those jokes in my bits as well. Yeah. And then they'll write tags on it and stuff. And then like the ta- the joke that I was talking about having a ter- terrible father that I wrote with yours, I got tags from that mic for it. Great. So combining the two has just been an awesome, you know, yeah. experience. That's it should Tuesdays be collaborative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love really that. Cool. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah, I think what you guys are doing is awesome. And you brought that from L.A. It's what... You know, we talked about mm-hmm. now being an LA comic. What what do you see the difference between Austin and LA here? Because I wasn't in the scene there. Um, that's such a great question, and uh, I'm going to answer this as delicately as possible. Um, in LA, <clears throat> there's two different types of comics in LA: the actors that want to do something while they're not acting. So they do stage stuff, something. And then the comics that want to be good. You don't get paid in LA. You get paid in laughs, applause, mm-hmm. in social media you likes. You get paid here? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Find that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in LA, so the competition is very, very high because you do have so many of those A-level comics that hang out at the comedy store and the improv. There's so many clubs and they're all working. And when you get bumped by Chris Rock <laughs> and you're like, well, I got to follow that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, here we go. <laughs> right. Here's my little jokes. <laughs> you learn real quick how to be in the moment and stay in the pocket and, um, and be the best you that you can be. 
And that's LA is like, you work hard to be funny very quickly. It's so rare to find a mic that is longer than three minutes in LA. So you have to be funny very fast. Um, here things are a little bit looser, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't seem to be concerned about getting better. It's more about getting paid and getting stage time. I yeah. don't feel like that competition is here as much. See, now I, I noticed that when I got here, but I noticed there's more people coming in that are writing. Like, mm -hmm. There's like Ridge, um, like uh, Ryer was writing a lot. Uh, Holly John, <laughs> these, these, these are open micers that are coming in with new jokes often. Mm -hmm. And I think that's starting to change the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's something like I was talking about. I, I try to have a new five minutes every week. Yeah, and I'll try to perform that five minutes 15 times to 20 times that week. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, that's, the, that's what I'm coming in as. What's the goal for you for this? What do you want to do, do with comedy? I would like to, um, I would like to headline, put out specials, you know, get to that level. Um, I, so, like, the, uh, the first thing, so I have my first special kind of in mind already, okay. and it's none of the jokes I'm doing right now. It's, it's totally separate. It's, it's about totally, you know, it, it's called Celebrating Mediocrity. Okay. And it's just all along those lines. Yeah. Why and isn't that a movie? Yeah, because why isn't anything that I've written a fucking movie? Because yeah. for some reason, I, they like them, they read them, they go, oh, this is fun, let's hold it up for six, seven, seven months, a year, and never make it. So that's been my experience with why isn't that a movie. So Got it, okay. I guess, so we're just doing something different this time. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think a lot of things I write should be movies. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are, they just haven't been made yet. Right. Well, yeah. they're, they're, they're scripted, they're, they're out there, but yeah. So um, now I'm starting to write novels. But mm -hmm. we talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's always my thing. I've, I've, I've always written two or three things at once. So like if I'm writing like a, a, a comedy, I'm usually writing an action or a thriller or two. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of keep the mind uh, focused on one thing at a time. That's so impressive. <laughs> well, it's hard to write a movie. It's hard to make a movie. It's hard to make art. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. But you're you're a talented musician and you write these songs. And now that's not going to be easy. I mean, you got to have a tune, you got to know the notes, you got to have a rhythm, you got to have a, a pacing, a rhyme, a reason. Um Yeah, it's just a different muscle. That's so, it. But were you a musician first or a comedian first? Did you learn music later? Um I've been doing music my whole life okay. since I was like a little kid. Um not in a funny way. And then I got into a career in radio broadcasting and it stuck with me very early. I just learned what's the point. If you're going to open the mic and talk into the void, yeah. why does anyone care? And I just figured out, I was like, well, if it's funny, people will keep listening, <laughs> you know? And so I learned how to write comedy on the air. Mm -hmm. um, very short, quick bits in and out. I had the luxury of sound effects and music nice. and and clips from the news to, to punch up what I was saying. Um, but then I wound up going through a divorce and I couldn't talk about the things I was thinking oh, yeah. on the air, <laughs> FCC rules or something. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, so then I signed up for an open mic and I didn't tell anybody and I just did it. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, after a couple of months, people were like, you do this? And I was like, yeah, they didn't hate me. So I just kept going back and it was healing and therapeutic. And it didn't occur to me that I should speak. Stop. It just didn't occur like this is not what you, Yeah, yeah. This is just a fun No, I was like, this is this is what I do now. <laughs> well that's fun. Yeah. Uh so it just became part of you. You just erupted kind of from the divorce a little bit, I guess. But, yeah. So yeah. as as the new Maggie was born, you said, Fuck it, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do me. Uh, yeah. 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 It also came in a time so I was doing a lot of improv comedy and when you're in radio, you go where the work is. And so I found myself in a lot of new towns and the best way to make friends was joining an improv team and so oh. they have them in every town i think there's other ways too i just want you to know that well you know, i'm not like a <laughs> i'm not a big drinker i'm not a, a big partier no. <laughs> you know yeah. i i don't like to work out with other people <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. i don't it's kind of like i didn't oh, yeah. know what else to do so i would just join these improv groups and um i was in champaign illinois and because i was on the radio the stand-up comedy scene which i loved and also helped that like the guys running it were really attractive mm -hmm. and uh but they would ask me to help promote this brand new festival that was coming through it was five days nine shows and i was at the end of it i was angry because 
there were three female comedians that came through and I wasn't mad at the guys running it. I was like, where are the women? I was like, well, I guess I have to do this. Oh yeah. So I just, yeah, just signed up. It just all kind of seemed to happen at the same time. And I'm so grateful that I did because those guys, um, Jesse and Justin Tuttle were so supportive and like, yeah, you've got something. Keep going. That's cool. Let's see what else you can do. So basically for yeah. women's awareness, you just did it. You know, yeah, just I, was just make, I was like, where sure are they? There, there's women aware. Yeah, there's, there's a spot for women in comedy, right? That's, yeah. yeah so there you go. Yeah. Well, like that's, why, that's why I started. <laughs> All right. Make sure, that, <laughs> make sure that women have an imprint in comedy. Yeah. And now because of you, Tony, make sure there's one in every show. Okay. <laughs> because of me. <laughs> it's all your fault. You look what you started. No, I'm kidding. While I'm sitting back there while he's picking through the names. No, I'm just kidding. I can't help it. No, I know. You were like... born this way. <laughs> I was. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So do you think the uh, the sound effect, do you use those sound effects and stuff in your uh, in your podcast? Do you? Uh... No. Oh. No, I don't think it needs it. It feels outdated. Uh-huh. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um, no, you have very fancy equipment. My podcast is not as fancy. Oh, we can, uh, we can do. Uh, well, I'll just do. It. <gasps> don't, don't <attend> <laughs> See, you know what it is. You know, you know. These are all my new ones. Uh, but if your left hand sees how much fun your right hand is having, it won't want to be left out. I don't know what I'm gonna use that one, <laughs> but. I think it should be It's a masturbating out. joke. That's where it is. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a Bill Cosby masturbating joke. What's Bill Cosby saying that? Oh, is that who that was? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> missed that. Yeah. I missed that. So we gotta. Great kid. Don't get cocky. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll pepper those in. We'll, we'll, we don't want to just bombard them, you know, because uh, it'll just make you want to, you know, like, That's fine. kill yourself or whatever. I'm not. I'm good. Right. Ah, I'm gonna kill myself. Yep. That's wow. Tough. I'm going to kill myself. That's how I feel after I bomb on stage. Yep. Yeah, no. Um, you don't really bomb, though. I, I've, I've seen, I've seen uh, you uh, uh, recover from uh, some things that uh, I think uh, I, I, most people would not recover from. Uh, just, uh, I think this challenge, Mike, uh, <laughs> is, a, is, 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 a good, is a good is a good place for you to not, learn not to bomb. <laughs> you know, I think I think what you do. Uh, is is a good reco recovery tool for everything. You know, whether you have a guitar in your hand or a, a quick witty joke, I think you have a way to turn around a room. I don't think you really bomb up there. You want to know why? Because I've gotten real good at being comfortable being myself. Yeah. And that's it. And because you can feel it when, like, you're having a conversation with someone and you're like, ooh, that went, that didn't land like I thought. Well, moving on. You know, it's just like... Yeah. You just get real comfortable being who you are and stop apologizing for it. Yeah, well, people keep want, want me to apologize for it. I think, yeah, when well, they send you letters and stuff, they say you should apologize for this. You You've know? gotten letters no. like that? <laughs> so, what? Uh, when we uh, came back from L.A., uh, we had, like, nothing. Like, L.A. took everything. Like, I told my car, flipped everything. Like, we came back from, in, like, suitcases. Wait, did you just say flipped your car? Yeah, Is that yeah. what you just said? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you know my what? buddy, Brian Swinehart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, uh... Oh, he's great. He, he, he gave me a car because I, uh, I flipped my car on a movie shoot that we were working on together and uh, I had no way of getting back to work. So he actually is the one. So he, he always has a couch to sleep on when he's in town. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's how we yeah, go he was back just here. Yeah. 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 Um, so, we were just doing some auditions together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. it's his way of hitting on girls. Is I, it? I don't know. He's always got a script with a wife in it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I don't want to bust his game. I play it. Uh, I, th I think he he gets cast for those roles a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, I, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Anyways, so, so you yeah. came back from LA. Um, so we have nothing. Over, you have nothing. Suitcases. So I ended up getting a scooter, a little, uh, mo uh, a little like like Hans Kim type scooter, and I'm like riding uh, to like. The, so like, if we want to go out to, you, I have a wife and two kids. They're young. I have to take the wife to Chuck E. Cheese, drop her off, go get one of the kids, drop them off, go get the other kid, and then we'll join them. So that's how we're getting around, okay? That's how you're living right now? Yeah, at that okay. time. Not not right now, at oh, that okay. time. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So I was like, you're just coming to challenge Mike and you're like, No, 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 <laughs> no. So um one of so I'm happy to drive him down the street a lot to to, to to do these things, you know, to go grocery shopping or whatever, because we have four four people on, on this little scooter. 
And uh, I got a letter in the mailbox one time that said, to the owner of the moped, <laughs> or to the moped owner, please stop driving up and down the street. It's very annoying, blah, blah, blah. Like, like just like one of these uppity neighbors. Yeah. And uh, I, was, <laughs> I was like, really, if I wish I could. So I always uh, held on to that, that letter, like, as, you know, for one of those times to, as things got better, you know, yeah, it was one yeah, of those yeah. inspirational things to, to the moped owner, you know, yeah. to, to the guy who thinks he's just having fun up and down the street. But really, we're just trying to get by. It was a, yeah. one of those times where we're just, yeah. <sighs> yeah, we had nothing. Instead of saying, like, are you okay? Mm. He was like, stop being an, yeah. Yeah, stop being an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I thought that was always a, a fun, you know, people have different takes on things. So that always kind of remind yeah, me of, yeah, yeah. you know, have, have a. Yeah, you know, yeah. Even other people who are. Oh, well, look at you now. Obnoxious. Yeah, I'm just obnoxious with a, with a Jeep now. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Does it have a cover? Yeah, you know, so as soon as I got here, I'm not used to your, your guys' hard, or your oak trees that hang low, and neither is my Jeep sensors because the sensors are low, and the oak trees are high, and I backed into one of these branches, and it busted out my whole back window, and busted up the, the top cover of my Jeep. It's a hardcover Jeep. Okay. I have to go get, re- so I go to the insurance place to get it replaced, whatever, they have to find out whatever. This is back in August. I still not have the replacement cover for the Jeep yet. It, it's like... So of, you're just driving an open-air Jeep? No, right no. It, oh. I, I've taped the little hole, and they, they've replaced the glass. I've already paid the $1,000 deductible and everything, but they have not gotten the, the... So they got the part in, but they're waiting on the primer. It's special from China. Okay. There's always some story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all these shipping issues and ch- supply chains and whatnot Yeah. can't get a hard top for the Jeep. So don't wreck your car right now. It, it's... <laughs> It, yeah, it will fucking noted. Yeah, noted. <laughs> and that's that's even an optional. It's an optional top. I don't even have to have that. You know, it's like yeah. That's what I say when I walk in a room. This top is optional. <laughs> I don't have to have this. It's a good point of view to have. <laughs> yeah, so. Sixty nine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, this is that amateur. I, I had these Bill and Ted ones. I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I figure they, they, they come in handy for something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You literally need like a five-year-old to just like push buttons. Hey, for yeah, you. I am. I am that five-year-old. I know. What me are you too. talking about? Me too. I don't want to. No. Do yeah. it. Do it. Do it. I got, uh, they will come up naturally in conversation. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. Fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so speaking of Uber Eats, <laughs> Okay. You, sir, are officially an Uber driver. No, I'm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel that'll come up a lot when I talk to comedies mm-hmm. or comedians. No, I know what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, but uh, I talk to comedies. I talk to comedies. <laughs> I think they're funny. So, uh, yeah, that was the uh, the weekend review. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So I know it didn't occur to me, but like I don't spend a lot of time running around to mics. But I do see you out and about. Yeah. Good. What, I try. You, uh, I have to make a very conscious effort to go out to do things. That's good. To be at shows and mics and but such. But you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a busy person. You're narrating books, right? Are you are you still doing that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. a is that a thing? I, you went to your narration voice there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you're also obviously writing your special, putting it out. Are mm-hmm. you are you? You say you don't get out much. Are you getting your hours in there? Are you able to perform that hour oh, yeah. stand up? Here's what I here's what I do. I'm getting booked enough where I don't feel like I need to go to mics, but I feel oh, like course, it's yeah. important to do them. Really? Some of my mentors in LA who are headlining stadiums and like doing uh, clubs, you know, in Vegas, it's right. like they're amazing. I still see them out at mics and I try and remember like stay humble, you know, like just do the work, you yeah. know, it, and, and sometimes just hanging out, being seen isn't for you. It's for everybody else. You know what I mean? When I see these like A and B list comics doing the mics, it's like, okay, they're, it's, mm. it's for, they're there for me to keep going, to keep working right. hard. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have to remember that sometimes, like you're never too busy to. To keep on showing that you're yeah. not too busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to. Just do it. You got cool. Yeah. Um, what was the question? Being out and uh, getting prepared. I getting think. out. Yeah, getting prepared. My doing. So this is what I do. A lot of times, it's like I'll just show up at mics. I don't go up all the time because I don't want to just wait. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just go and like say hi and like chat, watch some people. Usually to see like to scout talent for shows that I'm booking. Huh. Um, and then I'll go home and go on TikTok for an hour and like go live and then find a new fan base that way and people just interact and like roast people on the piano and it's 
so fun. That's cool. <laughs> it is so fun uh, to do that. And so, so, yeah. So I'm like working out my hour on TikTok live as people don't have any idea. And then, yeah. And so I'm about to hit the road in March. I'll be gone. So is it the best place to catch you on your TikTok? No, I mean, like, I'm in per, I do shows. I'm like performing three or four times a week, but like. But if you subscribe to your TikTok, you're going to see some funny stuff. But yeah, I'm on TikTok like at least once or twice a week. Oh, that's cool. Doing that. What's, yeah. what's your TikTok? At Maggie Mayfield. It's just that simple. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I keep it complicated. Not, not Maggie, simple, not Maggie sings or nothing. It's just no. not at Maggie Mayfield. You don't want to make it difficult. Well, it's Maggie with an eye. If I could literally impart these words of wisdom to this scene, stop making it difficult to find you, comedians, okay? Simplify your social media. Make it easy to find you. It is There's nothing more frustrating than having like three different handles on all the different platforms. Make it easy to find you. Yeah. I. That's my one... Please. All right. <laughs> I try. I, I am a writer Chado, but I also have director Chado or director O on uh, it, t- or it, or Twitter. Simplify you know? See, it. Yeah. You're the same person on all that. Keep it but simple. Not, you know, see, I was don't a writer make it and hard. a director. I was trying to find out who I was at the time. Now I have to do a comedian Chado, you know? No, just make it all the same. Make it all the same. Don't make it difficult. To don't make it you. spell Chado Shevsky. Is that how you say your last name? Yeah. See, you even, yeah. Oh, Ch- which oh, is Ch- fine. Chad O is fine. <laughs> yeah, but make it the same on all the places. There's other Chad O's. You know what there. I mean? There's a tea out there. You know, there's a tea ceremony called Chad O. It's a Japanese tea ceremony. I didn't know about that until I started Googling myself and only can find that. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? It's, it, is a, it is a tea ce- Japanese ceremony. Yeah. It is, a, it is a thing. How often do you Google yourself? Uh, that was a joke. Oh. <laughs> I was like, is that a thing people do? Uh, no. Uh, speaking of. <laughs> Googling yourself. Uh, Eli Halper uh, uh, told some jokes on here. It was, he was doing his thing. Yeah. And uh, we, we cut them together. We put it out there. And we say, Eli, Hal- Eli Halper, uh, blah, blah, blah. And like the next day, I, uh, he's in Thailand. Is he really? He gives me a message. He says, uh, hey, bro, I, I can't have my name out there like that because of whatever. So obviously he gets Google alerts on his name. He's like, yeah, yeah, because nobody else knows that your shit gets put out there that fast. Nobody's Googling yeah. themselves that. So you can Google alert your name, and I guess you do not have to Google yourself. It just comes to you. Whoa, that's bananas. Yeah, so if you're famous like Eli, you might need to know who's talking about you. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> so. Less I know it better. <laughs> I, ignorance I, I, is bliss that's a real thing <laughs> i knew like like uh so sharon stone told me she googles her more herself every morning to find out what they've said about her what did before. you just say sharon stone like googles herself every morning how do you know her so okay <laughs> what? here's a little story for the podcast okay i write this movie called uh, the story of a gun and uh, I have a couple of actors that are, 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 I'm interested in, and we go to the uh, to the backstage in Beverly Hills. It's a, it's a little club uh, on a Tuesday night, and we're going to hang out and uh, just uh, meet some other people who are in the industry and talk about the movie. Well, we're talking about the movie, and we're hanging out there, and uh, I hear this voice upstairs. He's doing spoken word, doing poetry. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's a that's, that's such, such such a cool voice. Yeah. I have this character in mind that would be awesome for that voice. So I go up there and I wait for him to be done. I talk to him and I'm like, "Hey man, I have the script for you. It'd be awesome. Yeah, you know, I'm sure you hear this all the time, but I love your voice." He's like, "Oh, I'm just I'm just in town. I'm actually doing uh, some spoken word stuff and recording some stuff. I would like to you know see the script." Yeah. So I go, "Okay, well, let me get your number. I'll, I'll meet up with you and give me the script." So I meet up with him, give him the script, <clears throat> start talking to him, and um, he looks at the part. He starts to read some of the stuff. He's like, "Oh man, this is great. I like it." He goes, "Who's who do you have in mind for these other parts?" I said, well, I wrote this one for Bruce Willis. I wrote this one for Sharon Stone. He throws a script back at me. He goes, get the fuck out of here. I go, what happened? What did I do? He goes, don't fucking come here and talk about bullshit. I know what you're trying to do. I go, what am I trying to do? He goes, you know I'm Sharon Stone's brother, and you're trying to get me in the... Oh, and, shut up. And I, oh, that's wild. I, I had no clue, man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I just had to tell him the whole thing. Anyways, Michael Stone ends up being a, a mentor of mine and teaching me all about writing and whatnot. He ends up... Uh, taking me to uh, to Sven, uh, I can't remember Sven's last name, but he, him and uh, Sven were working on a Terminator movie with James Cameron together. They were writing it, and Sven is actually Arnold Schwarzenegger's best friend, who he slept with on his, uh, who he let sleep on his couch while he was coming into the states. They were okay. in Conan the, the Barbarian together. Yep, yep, yep. All that stuff. Sven's uh, also the mall cop in um, 
mall rats and other stuff. But uh, so that's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, so that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's best friend. If anybody doesn't know out there, that's so. Oh my god. So, anyways, Michael Stone's teaching me, introduced me all these people and doing the stuff and we're talking and whatnot. And uh, it, it somehow the script ends up getting to uh, both Bruce Willis and uh, Sharon Stone. And um, Sharon really likes it. She wants to, you know, she, she, she talks about the part, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, whatever gets made, we'll do it, blah, blah, blah. Um, like a year, a year, two years, I don't know, something goes by. And he calls me up and uh, he goes, hey, uh, Sharon needs help moving this uh, playhouse at her house. Can you come over and help me move it real quick? Sure, I'll come over and help you. I'm always there for him. <laughs> so I go over and there she is at this house so uh, we always used to hang out at a different house oh she had God. she had she had three houses at beverly hills yeah and the one we used to hang out at <laughs> she was never at but it was like this really big uh big property it had guest house pool uh just big 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 open mansion house had oh, she had art everywhere yeah uh the, but she never used this house so uh -huh. he was just staying in the house while yeah. uh, while he was in town yeah. um but yeah so uh, we go over to her main property, which is also two houses. It's a it's a main house, and then it was another house up down like here. Lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That had uh, it was um, it was a separate property at one time, but they, they now it's all one. Yeah, yep. So they want to move this this uh, this playhouse for her kids from one spot to another spot, and uh, so we come down the, to, to the main to the main property or the the small house gate. And then uh, we walk up to the to the main to the. He's telling me about how we put all the stonework in. He was a, he was a stonemason for a long time. Put all this the stonework in. Did all the stuff. He's telling me about all this work he's done. And then uh, we get to the front door. Knock. And she opens the door. Like there she is. Oh wow. And uh, she's she's waiting for a massage. So she's not wearing much. She's like all flowy. Like like yeah. <laughs> of course. So um, she's like, hey, come back. We're gonna before we before we get to work. Let's uh, let's, let's talk. And so she reads me some stuff that she wrote about her uh, her uncle, and she goes, "I." She, she read me the stuff, and she wanted my opinion because she thought, after reading my writing, that I would have a deep opinion about what she wrote. Oh. And I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, so as, I'm twenty six. She's like respecting you. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. basic in, basic yeah. instinct. That was the that was the that was the game yeah. changer. Okay. Yeah. So. Basic instinct. You want to talk about? So I ended up sleeping in that lower house at, at some points. Uh, you my, slept at Sharon Stone's house. Yes. What? I've had Thanksgiving. Why dinner. am I turned on right now? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've actually yeah. So when the first time I slept in that house, so her her, her dad was passing away. I was helping the family with a move, like drive. I was driving them around a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> just to help her mom and her and her brother and whatnot, and mm -hmm. this is stuff. So I, I, that's why I ended up because we were living in Adelanto. Me and the wife and the kids, we were living up in Adelanto, which mm -hmm. is kind of far. Like, um, I, what's the main? Anyways, it, it's kind of far up north, like Barstow area. And so I was driving down back and forth, and so they just had me stay there instead of going back and forth, and. uh like the first night, <laughs> so I had the Sharon Stone dream. I'm gonna tell it. Um, I'm sleeping downstairs on the couch, and I literally have this dream of her coming out on her balcony, looking out, and then floating down to me from the balcony. And I, so I never have a dream about myself. Dreams are weird. This is the one time I've had yeah. a dream about myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, my the wife was reading Joe Est Esterhaus's uh, book about how he wrote Basic, Basic Instinct at the time. Okay. And yeah. All this stuff. So was you're like, just inundated with it. Yeah. All this yeah. stuff was happening. So it was just like crazy. Yeah. At the moment. But yeah, there's, there, it was it was a very surreal moment. And then also her her, her, fe her father was passing, you know, and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it was a hard time for yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you, as a married person, what is it like choosing to do comedy all of a sudden? Because you have kids, you have like right. a whole you have a whole ass life outside of comedy. So that's why I didn't do it the whole time. Yeah. The kids are twenty two, twenty three now. Oh, I see. Okay. Twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're in the twenties now, and they pay me rent. <laughs> so, Amazing! Yeah, you I, figured it out. So now I can go. Yeah, and do, you yeah. made your own tenants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, we also used to make our own employees. You know, they used to work at our stores and stuff for us. And we, uh, exactly. So yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they've always been our. Do you find supporters? Do you find it difficult to to want to get out? I mean, you guys have been married for a hot minute, so yeah. So that that, that is that does become a thing, like. Um, 
especially because I'm also writing a novel, so I can be at home writing and not be waiting for a, a, a bucket pool or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it is hard for me to uh, do these, you know, yeah. uh, three mics a night and whatnot, and, and I have to wait around to like two o'clock sometimes for for a yeah. pool. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, uh, yeah, I do I do uh, fight the urge to. Uh, stay at home and just write or, you know, uh, hang have out have with your hot wife. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's those, uh, those things. So it, it does become a, uh, a struggle. Does it become tense for you too in your relationship oh, when yeah, you go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you know, but it's always been like that. So like as a writer and, uh, I, I was optioned, uh, so the, at that time, but it wasn't for much money when we first started. So she had to go to Oklahoma with the wife and kids to stay with her mom when I went to L.A. the first time. Got it. And I lived in a closet under the stairs while she was, you know, out there. So I was living alone, and then I had to get everything and mm-hmm. bring them out. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened in, in Arizona. I had to go out there and get everything together and yeah. bring them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I've done this a lot of times. So I came out to Austin by myself at the beginning of August and didn't get them out here until September 15th or so. So, so was, it's not even been in a year. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. been that it's it's wow. been 27 weeks or 20 or 20 it's been about 30 weeks because there's a couple of weeks that kill tony didn't happen but i've signed up signed up every week since i've been here why austin because of for kill tony for for yeah this, you just so, had this idea you're like i want to do comedy and so you came here for kill tony yeah to no do, no that's I, I didn't want to just do com i can do comedy anywhere I want yeah. to be one of the biggest fucking comics there's going to be. Okay. And, and so, so there's, there's all this one, word yeah. about Austin. There's only yeah, one yeah. way to do it. and uh, That know. is not true. There's well, not just one way to do it. For me, there's only one way to do it. You know, and, and that's... That, what that, do you think is going to change when you get on to Kill Tony? No, not, not, not just Kill Tony. Having a good a good hour here. Having a good... You know, being being a good hang here. Being a good comic here. Being, you know... All, everything's going to happen here where it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I can't and, wait till you go to New York or LA. No, no, I'm sure I could be a good hang there too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for the style of comedy I have, like it's, uh, you know, Lucy K style, you know, uh, it, there's those yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah, are, yeah. 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 They're going to be living here, you know, not say Louis personally. But, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's my delusional part. Of good. It. <laughs> that's for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, now it's for everybody to, yeah, to, to, to dwell on and, feed off of yeah <laughs> yeah so no i'm just kidding I'll, well you know because only my haters watch this you know that right really no i'm just kidding. i don't know i, I, don't, I don't know, know who watches this <laughs> i do i check in sometimes that's cool yeah how's it how's your what well, your guys is uh podcast slide into my dms slide into your dms yeah. it's great um it's consistently getting bigger yeah. and um i'm waiting for us to hit a benchmark of listeners every week before I start asking for sponsorships. But I basically, I told Brian, I was like, listen, if we don't make money doing this within a year of starting, I'm not do I'm not going to keep going. Oh, so you're doing it for the money. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it's a great show. Yeah. I enjoy it very much, but I'm busy. I don't, yeah. I don't want to invest my time into something that's not going to give me a return. I gotcha. You know? Yeah. That and I'm not saying I'm not saying it's got to be like thousands of dollars. I'm not saying but at least it's got to be your like, time, right? Right. Okay. Your time's valuable. You know that. I don't know. I've, I haven't got paid for my time ever. I've been self-employed, you know. I, Same. I, I, I pay other Same. Time. Know your worth, boo. Yeah. Know, know your worth. My worth is uh, working 12 hours a day just to try to not go up bankrupt today, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To put out blue cheese, olives, and almonds, and yeah. Yeah. It looks fancy. It is fancy. You should have saw it when it was packaged. <laughs> but I'm, I'll take it. I'll take that one. All right. Um, yeah. So, no, I, I, I do agree. Everybody should have a value. But, uh, you know, if you know your worth, if you have a certain value, then nobody's going to be doing open mics. You know that, right? If I have a certain no, value? No, everybody has a certain value in their head, nobody's going to do open mics. But that's why I said, I'm like, yeah. it's important that you still go to them. Yeah. It's important. So to why do the work. Important to have their podcast and keep on putting yourself out there, helping Brian out there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's also an interesting return on investment now, which is why I'm not giving up on it yeah. so quickly. I mean, it is nice to see that there are listeners. We're finding new listeners, and they're consistently coming back, which is neat. Um, but also, like working with Brian has really helped me become someone in the scene because a year ago I didn't feel like anyone knew or cared or understood what I was about 
Because huh? I'm the weird girl that does it with a guitar. They don't get it. People don't get it. They're like, what is this shit? And I understand that. I'm a performance, an all-around performance. It's not like 100% diving. I get it. I get sure. that I'm a little cuckoo bananas. But working with Brian and getting to know this scene on a much, much more intimate level, it's now nice to show up places and know people and have had an experience that is positive yeah. with so many of these comics so oh, that's cool yeah I've, I've definitely noticed that about having a podcast it, mm-hmm. it does things do become more friendly uh, yeah. out there yeah so that, that is an interesting way of uh of, yeah uh, noticing. it definitely feels like i'm much more included than i was a year ago oh huh. that's yeah. interesting yeah but you were also new a year ago right you is that when you first got here no i got here in 2020 december 2020 oh really so, so you've been, been like here two for, years yeah oh, okay yeah wow um now when you do your uh comedy i, I do you think that I mean, are you being compared to like a Stephen Lynch type? Are you mm. trying to be your own? Uh, like when when you do musical acts, like I th- I mean, it's very hard to um, find somebody who does musical. I want to say comedy mu- musical comedy, yeah, it's yeah, a, it's yeah, a, comedy songs, yeah, comic song, yeah, yeah. that when yeah. you do that, yeah, because you're writing a joke, yes, with music that's funny, yes, thanks. So, <laughs> I think so. I yeah. think it's funny. So, I mean, that's 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 a totally different mindset. And there's not very many comics or musicians or musical comics who do that, <laughs> right? I don't know. Like, I don't like, know. Like, I, I can only think of, like, really Stephen Lynch. Dane, Dane Cook started with a guitar. And, Did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he started with, yeah. He's, he, I'm going to go look. And here, it's interesting because people are like, oh, you're like Bo Burnham, which is not, but, tr- not true yeah. at all because he's also a performance artist but yeah. he it's not stand-up comedy and much mine's much more like stand-up right. comedy and then people are like oh it's a guitar you're like garfunkel and oats and i'm like no they just sing their stories like yeah. that's it's it's a little different but i don't have the heart i'll take it if you think i'm like bo burnham i would love to have his accolades i would love to be sure. considered on that level i'll get there you know one day is that crazy? so i what is so interesting i'm I'll, I'll, I'll reveal it. I'm so nervous about filming the special because I'm not doing it with just a guitar. I'm also bringing out the piano. Oh, okay. And so for me, what I'm terrified of is mic placement. The jokes are good. The stories are good. But to be able to move a guitar off of my body and then move around to a keyboard and be able to tell stories in between, I am terrified. My director got it in my head. He was like, you're making a film. You're making a movie. And nobody can sit and watch you stand in one place for 45 minutes. They can't do that. And so now it's in my head. I'm like, okay, well, how do I Chain, how do I do scene changes? You know what that's like. Yeah. How do you make a scene change? Okay, I'll add a keyboard. But then moving between instruments, I am so <laughs> nervous. And I'll tell you, I practice in my apartment all the time. All the time. The same hour over and over and over again. Wow. How do I take this off? How do I move over here? Where's the mic going to be? It is the source <laughs> of my terror in making this. Wow. Is this isn't that, isn't that funny? So when you watch it, you're like, oh, she, you can tell. Like, she's... She's nervous about. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll have it so take. far down by then. You'll just it'd be like those guys with the Marines who just throw their guns around. You'll yeah. just have it done. Yeah. Just be yeah. Like, movement. Yeah. yeah. I mean, thinking about everything from like how my hair is going to be that day because you've got to take it off over your yeah. head to like how many pockets I'm going to have, which is important. <laughs> so it's like it's so many things to think about that you don't realize don't you just don't realize until you start yeah to get deeper you don't know what you don't know so do they have the guitar straps like a little like little clip clip like we can like like yeah, a backpack clip. i think they do i think they do that might be like a little might be a little bit something you can yeah someone did say to me though they're like don't worry about that because whatever you just said will be funny enough that people are going to need a moment to Okay. Catch up. Let them have it. So and give also, them a break. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you have that laugh time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But also, like, there is something to be said about standing in it and like receiving it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't want to yeah. miss that. Yeah. I don't want to miss that. Um, but yeah. So I've been going down the Bo Burnham rabbit hole, watching him and like, how does he move the stand? How does he move between, mm. you know, behind the, the keyboard? So it's, it's interesting because I don't see anybody doing what I'm doing, and so I'm not getting the info that I need. I'm not getting what I need yeah, yeah. by watching this stuff. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm excited, but nervous. If 
that I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So Bo 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 Burnham, Stephen Lynch. Stephen Lynch, yeah. Who There's else? another guy, Tim Hawkins, I think is his name, but he's like a a Christian comedian. Oh, uh, yeah, he doesn't count. He's um, <laughs> so funny though, yeah. so funny, and he sells out theaters. You know what I mean? And it's all family well, it, friendly. It's free it's, tickets. You take a the, collection at the end of the thing. It's for God. <laughs> it's not for him. You know. It is for him. He's got a family to pay for it too. But like watching him, he's the closest to what I'm doing, I would say. Okay. I would say that. And who's that again? Tim Hawkins, is, I think is his name. All right. I got to check that out. I, yeah. I don't know Tim Hawkins. I'll have to suffer through the Christian stuff to find you out. You wouldn't but. know. That's the thing. Like you wouldn't know unless you watched a full hour. But his stuff it's, on TikTok is like. It's that clean comedy thing, huh? It's so clean. Yeah. Um, are you a, are you a fan of the clean? Com- I mean, you're you're a clean comic. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you, no, you, 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 you give that persona <laughs> that you're coming out. You're not gonna say you're gonna say fudge and darn it, and then you hit them with the with, with the with 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 the BJ jokes. Uh, yeah, with you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you come out looking like uh, you might be running for governor, and then you know. This is looking like I'm going to run for I'm governor. Saying, you, you could. Okay. All you right. Could. I'd be very you, cool. You have the smile <laughs> and the, the, the point. You, yeah. You, you, you could be a politician if you needed to, but you know, I think uh, it, it's a good surprise when you when you hit them with the stuff. I know you're not a you know. Do you, do you find people going, hey, if you were a clean comic, you you probably put more, or we could get you we could get you more gigs. No, I haven't heard that. Really? Yeah. I hear it every time i go on stage i mean listen if it were important to me to go do colleges then yeah, yeah but, but i don't they, care they, i don't care about doing cruises i don't care oh i just have something to say and i want to say you. it yeah that's what i'm saying don't worry like, about making money unless you're doing a podcast <laughs> but that will come you know what i mean like yeah. the money will come and it is and i'm about to hit the road i'll be like, gone all of march um working on now did you book that yourself did you schedule that that tour yourself, or do you have a booking manager that's helping you with I do, that? I do have a manager that oh, helps nice. me with that. How long um, has that happen? been going on? Um, over a year. Well, I've been getting you a pretty good, steady yeah. bookings. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sad about... Did they come to you, or did you go to them? I went to them. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you sought out, they say, hey, I need, I want to be a road comic, and you found... Yeah, and actually, uh, my manager, Amy Muggridge, she... She was like, I can't put you on the road unless you have merch. I was like, okay. And that's why I made that CD. Because nice. I was like, well, I do music. What the hell else am I going to bring? So that you're trying makes to keep these Austin comics off the road. You tell them, don't make merch, huh? I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, if you're not ready to go on the road, don't worry about yeah. it. Because it's expensive. It, it costs a lot of money. I'm a big right. proponent for like, don't spend money where you don't have to. Right. Um, so your manager told you to invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. You and did. so I did. And then, uh, and then it took a while before... She started helping me get road gigs. It was more stuff here locally in Austin. Um, and I booked my my own my own very first huge tour. It was last July and I was gone the whole month. And oh, nice. Yeah. And so I think when did you get here? September last yeah, year? August. Yeah. Yeah. August. So Okay, so when I met you was literally like the darkest time I in my entire life. That's what people say about me a lot. That they meet you in their darkest yeah, hour. Yeah. yeah. Um that Kill Tony episode was uh, a gift I call from the universe because post tour depression is such a real thing. It's like I was out every day doing the thing that I love mm-hmm. so much. Um, I was dating someone at the time and I got back to post tour depression, which I was not anticipating. I got dragged online by uh, an, another comic here trying to cancel me. And then this guy and I broke up and it was literally the darkest I have ever felt. And I was like, I literally thought, I wasn't going to make it. Mm-hmm. The depression was that bad. Um, I don't know why we started talking about this, but that's when I met you was in August. And that moment, that's right. And kill Tony when I went up on stage uh, and I did really well. It was my second time on stage with him. And um, it was like the universe giving me a gift. Like, please don't stop. Keep going. We need you. Keep going. That's so crazy. So. Cause the first time I saw you was on kill Tony. And uh, you said you announced that you do the book narration and I'm like, oh, I need a good voice, a female voice for this uh, this book I'm I'm gonna yeah, be yeah, writing. Yeah. And I literally wrote, started writing it when I came here, and uh, literally ran into you that day. And mm-hmm. you, that was just happened to be your second time on the show. So it's so crazy to even yeah. have that part align, even just for yeah. me, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was cool. important for me too. I mean, that night was a big deal because yeah. yeah, we were with my friend Lauren Jameson, and she was really protective of me at that time, and. Um, just making sure that 
Which is crazy because yeah. I didn't meet you first. She she called you over to introduce you to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was interesting. Yeah. 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 That was that was a rough August 2022. That was a rough. Rough well, time. I'm glad you got through it. I'm Me, glad too. This, Me too. Me too. Yeah. Honestly, though, like, yeah, I needed that month though to be that heartbroken because it's propelled me to making this album. Yeah. All those things and all those bizarro relationships is now making this year possible and happen. Wow. I would have gotten here eventually, but it definitely like pushed. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is how keep work. going. If you're yeah. sad, just Fuck remember, brains are bizarre, and they'll yeah. get over themselves. They will. Over themselves, yep. yeah. Well, yeah. That's so cool, Maggie. Yeah. Anything else you want to throw in there before we... Uh... That was a lot of oversharing. and um... We both did, I think. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> got some new, got some new mem- memories, got some new enemies, you know. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what we do. Whatever. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I thank you for coming out. My uh, last uh, two guests, reminders and everything, no, no shows, so... No yeah. shows? Yeah, even my co-host, you know, if I'm having trouble with that. Getting on shows? No, getting here to fucking be here to be on the show. Oh. Yeah, so it, yeah. it's a no pay thing, I, get, I think it is what it is, huh? No yeah. pay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably what it is. Yeah. yeah. You start paying people, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, be intentional. Get sponsors. Get more, get, like and subscribe so I get sponsors and pay these people so they show up. Yeah. That's what it is, right? Pay yourself first, always. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yes, I appreciate you, Maggie. And uh, I don't have a good button to, to, to end with. So Pick we'll one. Just... <laughs> we'll end there. That's perfect. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. ATX Comedy Review. Chato, Maggie Mayfield.